sorry for that, but uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, for this Terraria playthrough, I decided to change it up entirely. So, I wanted to try Calamity. I have never done this before, and honestly it was a lot. Looking back at now, it was a lot. I uh, downloaded a bunch of mods that uh, YouTubers told me and just people recommended. So uh, yeah, let's just, enough with the talking, let's get right into it. I started off by uh, making my character and making my world. Of course, medium and master mode, because, you know, we gotta go hard at least. And uh, yeah, I spawned into the Calamity world. One thing I noticed right off the bat was that I had a starter bag. I, now, I thought this was cheating. I thought I maybe had something installed that was cheating, but I guess you just start with this, which was super helpful. I was, I was pretty stoked on it. So we got a cool little Calamity music box, which is, you know, nice to have. And this Terraria playthrough started like any other, just mining ore, exploring, but I do eventually get the ore excavator mod, as it just allows me to instantly mine ore veins, but I don't have that for right now, so you're gonna have to deal with the slow mining for a bit. Made my starter house, and realized there is a weird thing in the top right. Not too sure what this thing was, but I then realized it was to set the difficulty on Calamity, so I chose Revengeance because that seems like the most normal for, especially a first time Calamity playthrough. When I set the difficulty, I also got some weird bars called Rage Mode and Adrenaline. I didn't really know what these meant, but don't worry, I end up figuring it out. And before anyone flames me, yes, I know this is a melee playthrough, but in the beginning, I just used magic and, you know, ranged weapons just because I didn't really know what to do and was a little intimidated and thought it was just the easiest course of action, but don't worry, we end up fixing it real soon and only end up using melee weapons. Now, after a bit of exploring and the first night, I ended up coming across some weird enemies, killed them, and now I have a pet, so yeah. As well as I started making the elevator, but I eventually realized that there's there's an automatic elevator thing in Calamity, so y you know, that's good to know. After a hefty amount of time mining, I uh, made some armor, as well as you can make accessories and you can make a thing that makes you dig faster, so that was pretty nice to have. As well as having this uh, light bulb, that uh, you can uh, put it on the houses and NPCs like don't need anything to move in, which was uh, pretty nice to have. After making better armor, as in platinum armor, because it's the only thing I know how to get, I went to the Sky Islands and I found more than I thought. I had no clue what this thing was and was very lost, but all I know is it gave some nice loot, which was very cool. Holy sh! I kept exploring these uh, weird Sky Islands and decided it was time to try out my ore excavation mod and when I tell you this thing's satisfying this thing's satisfying oh. and after my long journey up there I was awarded with a red balloon the enchanted sword and the star fury which was super cool and I noticed they were a little different as in they were buffed you could say like the weapons since I was playing in calamity more than usual I made my house a lot bigger for NPCs, and I realized that there's weird NPCs. I forgot about that. And this guy was selling blocks. I, I This was crazy. This is a sick realization, and my, my building house needs will never go to waste ever again for materials. What? You can buy blocks? Dude, this guy is everything. I then went to go mining, and after saying hello to the lava, I got invaded by the Eye of Cthulhu. Now, I was not ready for this guy and ended up dying because I, it just wasn't it. This is also the point where I start to figure out, in Calamity, you can make anything. I literally just made life crystals, and you can literally make all, like, the accessories, weapons, like, you make everything, which was one thing I really did like about this, rather than vanilla Terraria, where you have to find it. I also figured out there was a thing that can automatically make arenas, like, <laughs> this mod's great! I love it! I also wanted to keep exploring, and this is when I came across a weird, like, acid biome that I had no clue what it was. It's called the Surferous Biome. Nailed it. Um, and didn't really know what to do here, but it was cool knowing that this was here. Oh! That's a big crocodile! And this time when I got back home, the Ai Cthulhu now wanted to fight me again. But I was prepared and wasn't too worried, especially with my enchanted sword and star fury. I got some potions and begun the fight. He wasn't too bad. 
a little, little harder, a little faster, which was, you know, a little intimidating. But overall, we ended up killing him, which was cool. Also awarding us with a nice Eye of Cthulhu shield to uh, be able to dash and uh, have some extra defense. Also with more addition to my house, I got the Alchemist and the Arena NPC. And once I figured out you could buy potions, my, my life was different. I next decided to keep the train going and fight King Slime. He was uh, a little more health, a little scarier, but honestly, King Slime was same old, same old, and we ended up killing him pretty uh, easily. I also did more exploring in the uh, Sky Islands because I didn't know what else there was, and especially with this calamity, but I found this like super cool corruption island thing, which was, it was actually uh, really helpful because uh, I got a ton of demon eye ore to make like the nightmare pickaxe and all that other stuff later in the game. I ended up making the uh, blood butcherer with all the uh, demonite because you can convert it to the other world's ore, which is very helpful. And I had the uh, boss list book to help me through all the vanilla bosses and calamity bosses. It organizes it all each in order so you don't have to worry about fighting something too early or something too late. I gave Torch God a try, and with enough dodging, he was very easy, and it wasn't even a challenge. And we get cool biome torches now, which is nice. After killing the Torch God, I was able to make the thing where I now have unlimited torches, which was very helpful. And I started to make an arena for the Desert Scourge, which was my next boss in this uh, Calamity playthrough. I started the fight, and I was not expecting three worms. In the picture, it only said one. But honestly, it was okay because I ended up fighting the Desert Scourge and winning because he honestly wasn't that bad. And I, I felt overpowered at this point. That shit was easy. I went to go kill the Scourge more for some, you know, more money because with this mod that I had installed, the Louis AFK, I was able to just make boss summons and just keep spawning them over and over and they wouldn't get used. So... Th technically only one boss summon was ever made which was really nice and with all the materials I've been collecting I was able to make an auto elevator which was amazing so it mined a elevator and not just any elevator it mines it like five blocks wide and you can choose the block and lighting and all that it it was very nice it, it looked very clean and I was so happy I didn't have to do any like dirty work I moved to explore the elevator and found this weird laboratory thing. I wasn't too sure what it was. All I knew is that it had some loot, but eventually later on, this, these I would come back to. For my next boss, I made my way to the underground desert because there was a hidden sea, which was cool. And there was a giant clam where I needed to fight. Honestly, it was very easy. Not really much of a challenge, just kind of annoying a little bit, especially with all those little clam guys, but we ended up killing him. After I killed the boss, there was a random water NPC serpent guy that spawned, and he was selling like a cool trident thing that was actually pretty sick. It goes through walls and homes in on enemies, so I, I bought the weapon. Then with my new uh, clam drops, I went and made the uh, sea, shine sword, sea Shine Sword. It's like an enchanted sword upgraded version, and would prove to be very useful for boss fights and stuff. I also made my house look a lot better than it usually does, so I was proud of it. Thanks to the uh, block guy for giving me all the blocks necessary. I went to the uh, glowing mushroom fields to get ready to fight Crabulon, which is the next boss, and I summoned him. This fight went pretty according to plan, nothing too hard at all. With the sea signs, sh sh the sword, and the trident, it was honestly a breeze, and I killed him. After getting home, I made a prison builder, as that was a thing where you can just trap NPCs and they count as houses. But I felt a little bad just making a bunch of them and just being lazy for housing. So I kind of just made a cool little tower, which was a nice addition, but eventually gets a little annoying, but it's all right. I was feeling good, so I kept it going with the uh, Brain of Cthulhu. And this guy was pretty easy until we got to his second phase. It, it became very hard, and he started doing some crazy teleporting, dashing stuff, and I couldn't tell which one was him. And in the end, we actually end up trading with him. So, thankfully, I I'm just glad we killed him, because I would have been a little frustrated if we didn't. And right after, we end up getting invaded by the Goblin Army, which was super nice, because now we can get the uh, Goblin Tinkerer to reforge all our gear and get the best modifiers and do the most damage possible, because we're going to need it for this playthrough. 
One thing I love about this mod is that with the ores and literally like some tissue samples and whatever else you have, most likely you can switch it to the other version that you would have in a different world with free costs. Just you're able to switch it, which is, I, I just love it. After getting more equipped with the Nightmare Pickaxe, I made my way down to hell to start getting some Hellstone. And with the Ore Excavator mod, it was so satisfying and so easy to get a ton of Hellstone. We ended up getting like way more than I thought. When we got back from mining, I made a bunch of Hellstone bars and began to make the Volcano, which is a part of the Knight's Edge I'll need eventually, as well as making the Molten Armor, which would be a big upgrade for pre-hard mode. Something very tragic happened, and I, I lost a ton of recording footage for me getting a bunch of gear and weapons and stuff, but it's okay. I'll have me in-game explain it for you guys. We got the Bladecrest Oath Sword. It's very good. Came from a demon. We got the strong wind blade, we made it with the, the sky, the sky, the, the clouds, the ore. Same with this biome blade, it's very cool, you just stick it into the ground of a biome, you get super cool stuff. We got molten stuff, made the, the sky fishing rod, nothing crazy. We just got the Miramasa and the shadow key, we are placing Skeletron Relic. And we got our aero spec armor with the aerial light ore, which is in the sky. We have bundle in the balloons, we have a giant shell, we have this bloody worm tooth. Um, what else is new that I lost all the footage on? We made a new house. We got more NPCs. I made a cool dark obsidian house type thing. Yeah, we beat, um, we beat, uh, let's see. Uh, we beat, uh, the perforators. We beat Queen Bee and we beat Skeletron. I lost all this footage, it's so sad. Thank you, me, from the game. I was, <laughs> I was upset about this. It was not fun. But anyways, we also got this girl who sells boss drops and modded boss drops and vanilla treasure bags and modded treasure bags. Super helpful. I forget why I came to the ice biome, but we ended up finding a cool lab again and I, I did not know what this thing was. All I knew is that there were some chests that had some good stuff, but until later, I wouldn't come back here. Something great I figured out is you can craft a crimson altar and just place it in your house. So now you don't have to go out of your way and find crimson altars. You can just place one at your house and always have a crafting station. I then made myself a nice arena in the snow and spawned Deerclops. Deerclops was honestly pretty simple, not really hard at all, especially with this new bio blade. We were able to uh, kill him pretty quick and yeah. I was feeling good so I kept it going by making the slime god summon and made a nice arena in the crimson and begun to fight the slime god. It was honestly pretty easy, nothing too crazy at all, and with the help of the Bladecrest Oath Sword, we were able to take care of him pretty quickly. Next, after killing Slime God, we were able to make the Knight's Edge in the Statagel armor, so it would be a better upgrade from our Aerospec armor, and with the Knight's Edge, we'd have a nice weapon for pre-hard mode. And a new addition to our weapons as well is the Fractured Arc. It is the first, like, super good Calamity weapon I've seen so far that I'm really hyped for because eventually it turns into the Arc of Cosmos, so stay tuned for that. I made my way over to the desert and started fighting the Desert Scourge because I need a lot more money, so I knew this is a good way and boss consumables don't get consumed, so unlimited spawns basically. After feeling a lot more confident and getting my bag up with money, I decided to fight the Wall of Flesh as the last pre-hard mode boss I'll need, and this was a big eye-opener because Wall of Flesh has some like crazy attacks near the end where he shoots demon size, as well as doing a ton of damage. So I had to reforge all of my accessories to warding for the most defense possible. Why? And uh, this boss fight was not very fun. Why? There's so much damage. Shit. Why does he do so much damage? I couldn't kill him a bunch of times, so I ended up making a house because I got bored. Over and over and over, we just keep dying to the wall of flesh, so I- this thing was extremely buffed in Calamity. No! No! We and after about three hours, this one attempt, we were finally able to do something with the wall of flesh, and we ended up killing him by overpowering him with just heavy defense. Finally, we were in hard mode. Yes! Yes! What's cool is after we killed the Wall of Flesh, we got a thing called the Charm of Luck, which gives better chances of reforges. And I soon figured out you can upgrade it, so then your reforges are just crazy only good. 
So that's gonna be nice later. I then went straight to mining hard mode ore, but realized that you didn't even need to mine altars and hard mode ore just spawned, but only the first tier at a time. So I only could get Koba or Palladium right now. So I think I had to defeat a certain boss or something to get more of them. And for this fight, I was able to grind out some pixie wings so we'd actually have some flight against the uh, queen slime. I made some palladium armor, cobalt pickaxe, and the caustic edge. As well as I found a weird summoning thing to help me out. Don't worry, I won't use it later on. But uh, I started queen slime fight. This fight was just super simple, like always, staying far away, shooting it. And since we had so much health, or like, we got a ton of regeneration, we ended up killing queen slime. She wasn't that bad at all. This time I made the Axe of Purity after getting a ton of materials for it and Skeletron Prime wanted to pay me a visit so uh, I decided to see what I can do even though he was not next on the boss list. The fight started and thankfully with this Axe of Purity we were able to do some good damage to him and he, I got a little scared though because he started shooting some rockets which was a big alarm but uh, in the end we do end up killing him after he tried doing a spinny attack. With this battle done, I now unlocked Mithril and Orichalcum, so it will be a next upgrade to my armor and whatever weapons else I can get. After upgrading my armor to Orichalcum armor, I decided to fight Cryogen. I started the boss and begun the fight. This first attempt really didn't go super planned, and I forget he enrages outside of the tundra, so we ended up dying, which is pretty sad, but we ended up trying him again pretty soon after. I rage crit from cryogen pretty quick, but I came across this weird astral biome and put this thing in an altar, but little did I know a huge worm summoned and I was not ready for this and we ended up dying really quick. I then decided to upgrade my accessories a bit and get the flesh knuckles for my upgraded gauntlets, as well as upgrading my axe of purity to get like a cool fire axe. I also made a Excalibur with like a huge rock in it. I wasn't too crazy about this one and it was alright. As well as I was killing a bunch of Crimson Mimics, I got the Claymore which is a really cool sword that summons like a bunch of stars around you and like kind of follows you a little bit when you run so that was helpful. After getting prepared with all my weapons and accessories and armor, I made my way back over to the Tundra and made some arenas and fought Cryogen again. This fight went completely different. By only staying in the tundra, I was able to prevent him from being enraged, and we were able to take the fight our way and ended up winning, allowing us access to cryonic bars. With the loot cryogen dropped, we were able to upgrade our fairies with his wings, as well as getting an accessory that is able to boost my damage, as well as give me the frost debuff for attacks. I fought slime gods a bunch because I needed gold and thought this would be an easy way to get that. And thankfully in Calamity, we didn't even have to farm for the Ink Charm. We could craft all the materials and we were able to make the Ink Shield, which was really nice at this stage. And the Warding it gave way more defense than I thought, as well as the Ink Shield. Like, it's way more defense than usual. I waited till night and spawned the twins. Honestly, I wish these guys were a little harder because they were kind of a joke. Honestly, if you just have some potions and you have like two gravitation potions, these guys don't really stand a chance against you if you just go up and down, so I ended up killing them pretty easily. With the kill of the second mechanical boss, I unlocked Titanium and Adamantite, increasing our armor and weapons even more for this last mechanical boss fight. I then made Adamantite armor rather than Titanium just because it had more defense, and I also bought the Cryogen Treasure Bag to get the Avalanche, which is a very strong cold debuff melee weapon. After acquiring some new weapon upgrades and armor upgrades, I went to the Sulfurous biome to fight the Aquatic Scourge because it was the next boss in the boss list. And with the Avalanche and other things to help me out, this boss was not that bad and we shredded him. After killing the Aquatic Scourge guy, I made the Cosmolite which is able to skip day, night, whatever else. Very time saving. And begun the Destroyer fight. And this fight was extremely easy with the help with my uh, Avalanche. It just piercing and it spawns so many like icicles that destroyer didn't stand a chance and we ended up killing him in like 10 seconds flat. After killing all the mechanical bosses, I was able to get some nice upgrades like the hallowed armor, the Excalibur, and upgrading my minecart, as well as a few other things later on. Like getting the Ponage Hammer, 
It's a new Calamity weapon, and I was pretty stoked on this one, because I've never used this thing, but apparently you can upgrade it a ton, so stay tuned for that. And of course we were able to get our sweet, sweet True Knight's Edge. I always love this weapon. I was equipped and ready, and went to Knight, and summoned the Calamitous Clone. This thing was very interesting. I've never fought it before, never even seen it. I did some damage to him, got to his second stage, and I had to do a weird dodging, like, session from all his, like, weird blob attacks. He then spawned, like, two guys to come after me, but they were pretty easy, and in the end, we do end up killing him, also awarding us with a broken hero sword, which was very interesting. And with the broken hero sword, we were able to upgrade our arc sword to an even better version of it, so it was pretty nice, as well as it looked really cool. Like, all the rainbow and, like, the parrying, it was nice. And yes, I know I was talking about laziness, so I made a bunch of NPC jails because I did not feel like making houses for a bunch of NPCs, so... And while talking to some of the cool NPCs, I was able to buy this life-changing item called the Momentum Capacita com Capacitor. It literally makes you go at the speed of light if you just hold it down, so traveling was not an issue anymore. After getting a nice pickaxe axe from all the mechanical bosses, I went to the jungle to start mining for Chlorophyte because I wanted the turtle armor eventually to upgrade my melee by a ton. I then came across a huge natural big area with these weird things. I didn't know what these were, but I really wanted to break one. I was very tempted. So I ended up breaking one and Plantera spawned, which was not good because I was not prepared. I did not mean to spawn Plantera, but Plantera was spawned in, so I ain't no b so I'm gonna fight her. And honestly, just going in circles with this huge arena made it really easy. We got to the second stage, it was also really easy, even though it was a little close, but we ended up killing her when we weren't even prepared. We did it! Some big upgrades came our way. Since we had broken hero swords from earlier, and we have Chlorophyte to make the true Excalibur, we were able to make the Terra Blade, which was extremely good to have right now and then went back to the jungle to get this thing called perennial ore to make perennial bars because it helped me make some other things as well as the hunt for turtle shells because i really needed that turtle armor thankfully i killed so many enemies in the jungle a moth spawn so i killed it to get butterfly wings a nice upgrade to our cryogen wings after a good 30 minutes of farming, I was finally able to make my turtle armor, allowing me to take a lot more damage as well as have a lot more defense with this. The dungeon was now open, so I farmed for a ton of ectoplasm to eventually make the pumpkin moon and the frost moon. I also got enough stuff to make the master ninja gear, even though I'd, I never really use it ever in this playthrough. After getting enough ectoplasm to make the frost moon, I summoned it and begun to fight it. I thought it would honestly be not too bad, especially with the terror blade, but... I was kind of wrong and this thing was a lot harder and we did pretty good overall but we definitely could have done a lot better. I know it's a little late for it but I did end up spawning the pirate invasion because I wanted the dutchman relic just because I wanted to feel complete myself and the pirate army was, was not hard at all we completed it pretty quick. I was also able to upgrade to the angel treads which is an upgraded version of the terror spark boots and you can keep going with this for quite a while in calamity by upgrading and upgrading and upgrading. And I upgraded my Ang Shield to the Asgard's Valor, because I guess that's a thing. You can upgrade the Ang Shield. I went to the ocean and made an arena and killed this weird Anahita in the water, because I guess it spawns like a Leviathan boss. And this thing was no joke. She dealt some serious damage, so we ended up dying, and it was not fun. And again... WHY DO YOU DO SO MUCH DAMAGE?! This time we got a lot closer and got to Leviathan's second stage, but we ended up dying and I, I just, I couldn't, so I ended up rage quitting. This time I spawned her again after getting off for a bit, and it went a lot better. I got a lot more potions, felt a lot more prepared, know her patterns a little bit better, and when Leviathan came up, we ended up killing him and eventually killed her, so the fight overall wasn't too bad, but I didn't have fun with this boss. My next boss was Astrum Eris in the Astro Biome, and this guy was a joke. I don't know how this guy is so high up in the boss list, but we ended up killing him pretty easily. Let's keep this boss streak going. I went straight to the Lizard Temple to kill Gollum, made a little simple arena, and Gollum was simple like always. Gollum was not hard. He did have some increased damage and like faster attacks, and his it was a little different, but overall it was Gollum. Gollum is pretty easy. 
We were also able to make the beetle armor after getting the beetle husks, and I went for the defense route because I thought I would need it, especially in Calamity, so yeah. And since I killed Gollum and got the Pixaw, I was able to go in the Abyss, which is under the Sulfurous area, and mine Scoria Ore. It's just like a, the next ore, but it's like it's like a Hellstone type thing. It's kind of weird, but it was also cool at the same time. Sadly, I did not know my beetle armor would not last long, and we ended up making hypothermic subligar armor. This is like a cool calamity armor, and it, I was pretty stoked on it. It seemed cool and interesting. With all the scoria bars, I also made the Hellfire Flame Burge, which is a cool scoria weapon. And I went to the dungeon to farm for just more whatever else there was, ectoplasm, paladin's hammer. But I figured out what a zerg potion was. It was like a battle potion on steroids. Like, I was getting insane spawns. I don't know why I haven't used this earlier. I'm now able to upgrade my hammer earlier I got from the Hallowed to the Fallen Paladin's Hammer. This thing was crazy. It did so much damage and it was it was strong. In Calamity, I didn't know this, but you can maximize your health even more than usual. And I made a Miracle Fruit to do that. It raises my health by 25 and I think that's a little bit other stuff. I also ate a Blood Orange that did the exact same thing, increasing my health again. This time I fought the Pumpkin Moon to test my luck, and it went a lot better, especially better than the Frost Moon. And it was nice, because we got a ton of loot and a ton of money to go with it all. Next was the Martian Madness Invasion event, and honestly it wasn't too bad. I went back to the arena, started fighting it. Overall pretty simple, with the help of our new Scoria Wings as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention that one. And we ended up killing the Martian Madness event, which overall pretty easy. For our loot afterwards, we were able to get the Influx Waiver, which is a part of the Zenith later on. Right before the Duke Fishon fight, we were able to get the Horseman Blade, which is also another part of the Zenith. Very cool. And I, this fight did not go as planned, and same with the other times. How the f He has 50,000 health! After dying plenty of times, I got used to Duke Fishron's patterns and his like infinite dashing near the end part thing. And we ended up killing Duke Fishron, which I was so thankful for. <laughs> and right after that, we fought him again and killed him. Thankfully from killing him, we were able to get the Fishron wings, which were a big upgrade to our Scoria wings. After Fishron, I went to the jungle to get some plague canisters to spawn plague bigger Goliath. And this guy was pretty hard, especially with all his missiles and bees and nukes that were coming at me. But in the end, we do end up killing him. And after that kill, I was also able to make the Exalted Oath Blade, which is a pretty sick weapon. I also made a Mushroom House for the Truffle NPC because I did need Shroomite Bars later in the game. The very next boss was Empress of Light. And honestly, I wasn't too worried because after the long and tedious time I put into this boss, I feel like I should be able to kill her. And in the end, we actually do end up killing her. Not that very surprising though. I did also get the Empress of Light wings rather than the Fish on wings. I didn't know which one was better. So I just used Empress of Light wings and we summoned the Ravager, our next boss. And he was like an, a little harder golem, but overall we were able to kill him. It was time for cultists, so I went over to the Skeletron Arena to kill the little cultist right there, and the lunatic cultist fight begun. He was a little harder, definitely shooting more things, but with our new starlight we got from Empress of Light, he didn't really stand a chance, and our Terra Blade is just always so good. We also killed the Solar Pillar because it was right there, and we needed the solar weapons. As I got back to my house, I made the Solar Eruption and the Daybreak. They were really good, like always, and I reforged them to the best modifier possible. I then ended up killing the Stardust Pillar. Before we killed all the pillars though, I wanted to fight one more boss, which is the Astrum Deuce. He was the big worm I tried fighting earlier that ended terribly, but we ended up killing him because we were a lot more prepared and we got a lot of good loot. And with the help of our new weapon, Entropic Claymore, we were able to kill the pillars pretty quickly. I then awaited doom for Moonlord and knew it wasn't over. And this time he was a little different. He was harder, but he was also still easy. He had all his eyes like normal, but his health also was glitched. I don't know what happened with that, but his third top eye just would keep shooting no matter what stage you're in, which was kind of annoying, but in the end, we do end up killing him, so thank God. After killing Moonlord, we were able to upgrade to the Stellar Contempt, which is an upgrade from our Fallen Paladin Hammer. This thing was crazy. 1,043 damage was just unreal. 
We were also able to upgrade our arc to the arc of elements, which was an insane upgrade as well. At this point, the zenith is seeming bad. I fought Moon Lord again for more Luminite, as well as to try out my new weapons, and we obliterated him. He was just not fair. And again, for even more Luminite. After all that farming, we were able to get some Solar Flare armor, which was a fat upgrade to our Beetle armor, as well as we were able to upgrade to the Celestial Tracers, which is an even bigger upgrade from our Terra Spark boots way originally. We were also now able to mine Astral Ore with our Solar Flare pickaxe, so it was going to be a nice upgrade for some of our weapons and stuff. And with this newly acquired Astral Ore, we were able to make the True Biome Blade, which was a very good weapon as well. Our next boss was the Guardian Commander. This thing was pretty annoying, and honestly, it was, it was pretty strong, but we were able to kill it, thankfully, so it wasn't too bad. Right after I killed him, I got another boss spawner to spawn Providence, and Providence doesn't f around. Providence means business. Come on! Oh, oh God, dude, the f <laughs> Are you? I don't know how I whiffed so much on the boss I literally beat like first try, but we did and we didn't even get what I was looking for. But I also did make two new weapons, the Elemental Lance and the Stellar Striker. And right before the Providence fight, we were finally able to get War Banner of the Sun, increasing my melee damage by a ton. That's literally the only accessory I wanted. Now with this new accessory and the weapons I got, we were finally able to kill Providence, and I was so happy that I'm done with this terrible boss. We also made the Scorching Hatchet with all our new stuff, along with the Galactus Blade, which is an upgraded Star Wrath that shoots stars like twice as fast. I also got some Ulebalabum ore from the jungle to make the Terragon armor, which was a bigger upgrade from Solar Flare, which is crazy and weird to say. And we made the Defiled Greatsword, which would be a very strong weapon against this next upcoming boss. I cleared a huge area in the dungeon and summoned the Ceaseless Void, which was the next boss, and this guy was terrifying. He was so powerful, I didn't stand a chance at all. I then decided it was a good time though since I couldn't beat him to upgrade my defense and regeneration with Shimmer so I would be a little more prepared against this boss. This time I made the arena like twice as big and then I gave Ceaseless Void another shot. With this huge arena Ceaseless Void was a lot easier to dodge and walk around and we were destroying these little orbs around him. I don't even know what these were called. But we did take some heavy hits but in the end we do end up killing Ceaseless Void which was a huge relief because this guy sucked. Next on the list after Ceaseless Void, I started to fight Dragon Folly. Dragon Folly was this weird bird monster. I've never seen this thing before. And honestly, he was he was a joke. I don't know why he's so up on the tier list as well. But uh, in the end, we do end up killing him. Kept the train going with the next boss, Stormweaver. Now, this guy had a ridiculous amount of health. And at first, I did not really know what to do. But I soon realized that if you just hit him in the tail, he takes a ton of damage, so it was all good. And in the end, we end up killing him. Overall, this boss was pretty easy. I went down to the underworld to fight the next boss, Cygnus. Now, the, the first attempt didn't really go as planned, and I feel like I didn't have a big enough arena, and he was just able to kill me pretty easily. But that didn't stop me. I then felt very weak, like I needed a new weapon, so I searched up a weapon and got the Teratomor Mirror. This thing is uh, pretty nice, and it was exceptionally powerful compared to my other weapons. And this time for the arena, I decided to make a huge thing in the underworld and actually make a serious arena rather than just running across a hell bridge. And this time the Cygnus fight went completely different. With the help of my new Teratamor and the Defiled Greatsword, I was able to completely obliterate Cygnus, and the movement in this arena was, it felt a lot better. With the Annihilation of Cygnus, I made the Necroplasmic Beacon to summon the Poltergast. It was like an upgraded Plantera dungeon version. Now, he was a little hard, a little tricky, but with the help of this huge arena and just a ton of space to move around in, he honestly wasn't too bad, and in the end, we ended up killing him. And after I killed Poltergast, I was able to make the Terror Blade, which is like the Terra Blade on steroids. 
this this thing was crazy it was gonna carry me pretty far and it was honestly gonna be my main weapon of use from now on i made my way over to the brimstone crag to start farming for a ton of bloodstone because i needed it for my next set of armor i was gonna get after a bunch of farming, I was able to put down the Tarragon armor and make the Blood Flare armor. Now this armor was very powerful and gives me buff attacks as a set bonus. I was able to make a diving suit after getting some loot at the top of the abyss. So I was able to go all the way down and start killing some big scary monsters to get some reaper teeth and other good weapons down there as well. And we also ended up getting the boss rush, which is the last boss in the game, which I didn't know that until way later. With the reaper teeth I got, I was able to upgrade my horseman blade to the last morning, which was just a quicker horseman blade, honestly. Nothing really too crazy. I also changed out my gloves for the fire gauntlets because it'd be better for my melee damage and melee speed, as well as getting the affliction, which just reduces damage taken and increases my damage, as well as getting the community where over time it gets very strong depending on how many bosses you've killed so far. I also had the badge of bravery to help with my melee speed and damage by a lot as well. After all these upgrades, I made my way over to the old Duke, Duke Fishron's grandfather, and uh, begun to fight him. With this new Terra Blade acquired, he was light work, not even hard, especially since we could be super far away. This thing has crazy range, and as long as you keep distance, you should be good, and in the end, we end up killing him. Now this next boss, Devourer of Gods, this took a ridiculous amount of time. I I have no words, I'll just let it play out. Oh my god! No! Stop! Damn it! I don't want to talk about how long this boss took to exactly beat, but on this last attempt, we finally were able to kill him. This guy took, I don't even, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. After that atrocious boss, I summoned the pumpkin moon to get a bunch of nightmare fuel from all the enemies to make some fragments that would be helpful later. Same with the frost moon and the solar eclipse. And with all this loot I got, I was able to upgrade a lot more of my accessories and upgrade my wings, as well as get the final tier of the elemental gauntlet. I also was able to make the God Slayer armor, which gives me a super cool dash that deals massive damage to enemies, and I take no damage. We did a lot of weapon upgrades, but the real ones to take away from was the big hammer and the galaxia, and this weird thingy with weird cuts on the sword. After upgrading my weapons and accessories again, I decided to fight Yaron because he was the next boss on the list and these first couple attempts did not go well and I knew I needed to change something. I decided that without enough movement, this fight would not be possible. So I went to the jungle and made a huge arena like that goes to like almost the top of the sky. So I would be prepared and not have to worry about Yaron attacking me with his stupid flame balls or any other attack. After a good three hours of hard work against this boss, we were finally able to kill him. After a long-winded fight and some crazy dodging, we got him. And with Yaron finally dead, I was able to upgrade the Ark to the Ark of Cosmos, the final tier, as well as make upgraded Vampire Knives, which would be very helpful later, and get Yaron's accessory that buffs my defense by a ton and get this ring that improves my defense or increases health regeneration depending on the time of day. Finally, after killing Yaron, I was able to get Auric Bars and craft the Zenith. I was saving a bunch of weapons for this and now I finally had the Zenith. And I also made a new Calamity weapon with the Auric Bars called the Atraxia. While I was making my way down to the Underworld Lab, we were able to make the Auric Tesla armor, advancing our armor even more. I was exploring down in the underworld when I found the Mirasama, which was a very strong true melee weapon, which was very nice to have, as well as I was just hunting for these labs because I needed to craft the Exomex, and during this playthrough I had no clue, so I had to search a video. 
And with Yaron Fragments, we were able to eat the Yaron Dragon Fruit to increase our total life. After having everything I needed for the Exomech, I decided to spawn him right there. I don't know why I did, but I thought I would get like a spawner or something, but that was not the case. And we ended up dying fairly quick because we were not prepared. Before I kept fighting him, failing and dying and crying, I decided to make the Dragon Pow, which is the best like flail you can get. And this thing was crazy. This carried me every time against Exomech. This time I actually got a lot more prepared and put it in a good area, but it still wasn't enough and Exomex ended up killing me. The sky things got in my way too much, so I decided to clear it all up and yes, my game lagged pretty bad, but we got a ton of Luminite and stuff. I did not know all this was here. It's good to know though. I was then ready for Exomex again, and with my Dragon Pow and flying diagonally, which is what I figured out, we were able to do some serious damage, and yeah, it was pretty hard, but we were able to take care of all three mechs and complete the job. We were also able to get a crazy accessory from the Exomex called the Dradon Heart, where our adrenaline doesn't go away in one hit, and we instead gain like 300 life instantly. Super helpful thing. And with our exoprisms and combining some old swords, we were able to make the exoblade, which would probably be our best weapon because this thing did a ton of damage and it was like homing in, so I didn't have to worry about aiming. And I was reading online that something called the purity was a crazy accessory to have and like a must have type of thing, so I ended up making it and here's its stats, like this thing is so good. I made the altar and gave Calamitous Witch a try, and honestly, she really wasn't that bad. It was just kind of annoying dodging in these weird phases, but we also had to deal with some dragons and some blood orb things and her, like, shotgun shooting. Also, these two guys spawned in, and they were kind of messing me up a bit, but in the end, we were able to kill her, and honestly, this boss was not that hard. She should have been harder. We were able to make some crazy weapons, which honestly I didn't really use too much of them. Only notably the upgraded vampire knives, cause those are crazy and gave you crazy healing as well. And after getting enough shadow spec bars, I was able to make our final armor called Demon Shade Armor. And it's set bonus, you can do 2.25 times more damage but you also get one and a quarter more damage done to you. So it was kind of a trade-off, but overall super good for extra damage. In getting ready to fight boss rush, we were able to upgrade our hammer to its final form, as well as make this iridescent Excalibur. This thing was crazy. I went to the arena to start up boss rush and got ready for all the bosses. Pretty hard mode bosses were kind of tedious and annoying because they all were buffed but overall they weren't really that bad and we were able to clear pre hard mode pretty easily. When we got to hard mode, things got a little bit different and a little more scary because some monsters did some crazy damage. Eventually we made it to Supreme Witch Calamitous. She started doing a ton of damage, but with my upgraded Vampire Knives, we were able to gain a ton of health and do a ton of damage with us finally killing Boss Rush. What? We got a rock. And of course, we had to make a pet rock with our rock. So here's the final loadout. We have a bunch of hammers and weapons and stuff. And I know I forgot some things because I know this is my first time playing Calamity, so I'm not perfect. But I did the best I can and we had the Demon Shade armor to finish it off. As well as all my accessories were at warding for the most defense possible. These things were super helpful and honestly couldn't have done it without them. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it took me literally forever to make this. And this melee playthrough was not easy, but if you guys want to see more, just let me know. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. P please, I, I need it, please. Mm -hmm.